Chaleos along with Tom Bettis from the KSL Greenhouse. And today we are at Olson's Greenhouse and with, with, we are with Brian Lloyd. And Brian, we're excited to be here. We're here talking about spring containers and how to put together your containers. And really, you have to start out with a good foundation. So Tom, talk about soil first. Well, in your containers, you always need commercial potting soil and you don't want to buy the cheapest potting soil that you can find. You always want to get a good brand and make sure that it says potting soil on it. And another mistake people oftentimes make is in these containers, because sometimes some of them can take a lot of potting soil, they'll honestly put anything from rocks to trash in the bottom half of the container and then fill it with soil. And initially things work out okay, but as those plants grow, they're going to need that rooting space. And because there's, especially if you've put something like trash in the bottom, they get really top heavy and they'll tip over. And so the, the best practice is to always fill the, the container completely with potting soil. Mm -hmm. So the second thing you really need to think about is where you're going to place your container, whether it's going to be the sun or the shade, and that's important. It really is. Now the same soil will work for both the locations, but if you try to put a full sun container in the shade, it'll fade out, not work well, and conversely, if you put a shade container in the sun, the plants will quickly scorch, and so you need to know and research your location, make sure you have water available that, or you're going to water by hand, but you'd really need to know a little bit in advance what the climate is like, where you're putting these, so that you can have success all season long. Today we're going to do both a, a container that goes in the shade and a container that goes in the sun. And Brian has the perfect formula for us, so describe the right. perfect formula for putting together a container. So this is talking about the structure of the yes. plant, and it's called thrillers, fillers, and spillers. And our thriller is something tall or showy that brings us into the container. So from far away, we always recognize the thriller first. And that can be at the center of the container if we're putting it out in a patio setting where we might walk around all sides of the container. But I usually like to put my thrillers on one side, even if it's circular, I put them towards one edge of the plant because a lot of times our containers go up against a wall or something else. And so that kind of serves as the backdrop for the rest of the container. And that's what we've done here with this Dracaena grass. This is actually a red Dracaena spike. And uh, we'll put that, to, as we plant this up here in just a second, we'll put that towards the edge of the pot on the back edge, and that'll kind of set a backdrop for all the rest of the fillers and spillers. And then the fillers, in this case, it's the coleus that we have here. This is not a blooming plant, but we're trying to design a container for the shade. And this is gonna be mostly showing how you can use foliage instead of blooms, but still have contrasting colors to add a lot of interest to the container. So in this case, our filler is something mounding or tall that spreads out and fills the majority of the soil volume of the container. And in this case, we're using, actually it's already a pre-existing planter. I just want a little more, more soil volume and we want to add some interest with other plants. So I'm going to upgrade and upsize this container into the bigger one and add some other plants around them. But this container is already a tricolor mix of three different colors of coleus. So we've already got, you know, the the mint coleus that has the mint edge uh, playing off the, the chartreuse green fo uh, foliage of this other variety. And then we've kind of got a more of a burnt orange type and all three work together by themselves. But then I love this, this color of coleus because that mint edge, now we can pull it out with other things like Lismachia uh, for our spillers. So that moves us onto the spiller part of the container. And this is always something I like to soften the edge. Um, we don't like to see so much soil when we're looking into our containers and spillers are really great because they'll grow over and trail and they'll cover that edge of the container as well as well as any foliage or soil that happens to be showing on the edge. So thrillers, fillers and spillers. I really like the way you laid that out and kind of saw how all the plants went together before we started because I think many of us have a really hard time deciding how it's going to look, how we're going to put it together. So I think you did a good job of showing people how they can lay it out in their pot before they actually start planting. So I love to do this. I love to keep the plants in their own container and put them in the pot just to kind of see how much, how, how many plants I want in there. And what I like to do for the most part, I love to cram. I love more than you would think is ideal because I'd rather have instant gratification. When we're talking about containers, I like to switch my containers out two, maybe three times in a year. And so what I like is more plants now, not give them so much time to grow and fill in. 
but if you, some people like that if you want a container that'll last all season long you can get smaller plants and space them out a little bit more it's just more of a waiting game you might have to wait six to eight weeks before it has the full look but it might last longer in the seat or for you because of that so two different philosophies on the way to, the way to go but i like to cram them in uh, and then even when they're in their own pots i put more than you think would fit because we can kind of manipulate these root balls to fit into this container. So I like to overstuff them in this stage and then pull them all out. Now I know about where they're all gonna go and then we can cram them together. And the great thing about this is you can actually put this together at the store when you're buying your pot and you can actually place the plants in there and see yeah. how, you know, how many plants you're going to need. So I'm gonna start with, I, I th might have a little extra soil. I'll probably take some out. Yeah, you can put it in the other container, yeah. So I like to start with the bigger, the biggest soil size first. And I just dig enough of a hole that I can get the top of you. The biggest thing on planting containers is you want the top of all the soil levels to match. You don't want one sitting lower than another or one sitting too high out of your uh, container soil because then that one will dry out more quickly. So at the end, we're gonna want all the soil volumes to be even at one level in this. So I'm gonna start with the biggest one and when I'm planting a container from an older container size into a new one, I just work my hand into the foliage canopy. And this is three separate plants. So I'm just doing my best to support the soil ball, the root ball, uh, without damaging any plants. And then I just flip it upside down. Now I'm holding the soil ball. Uh, the plants are all still okay. And I'll just work that off. I wanna make sure it's not root bound. Usually they're not. But if they are, um, this one's really young, so I'm not gonna really manipulate the roots. But if it were root bound, I might just tear the roots a little bit Separate them to little encourage bit. them to grow in a different direction than round in a pot. But this That's one's- actually perfectly, perfectly rooted for what you're doing. Yeah, these are really young roots and I don't wanna damage any of them. Just to give it the best chance of success, these are already kind of growing in different directions. So they're just fine. I'm not gonna touch them much at all. So I'll just take that root ball and set it in there. I can see it's, I don't have nearly enough soil out of there. So let's get a little bit more out of there, Ton. That's perfect. And then we'll dig a hole again. Nice. Okay, now the other thing is, I want the soil levels all the same, but I want them below the rim of the pot because we don't want water just spilling out over the side when we water it. We want a little reservoir in there. So maybe a half inch to an inch below the edge of the pot. And so I've got that pushed down and in there nice. Now I can start to fill around it. Now this is my next biggest pot. This is my Thriller. Remember it's a Dracaena spike. And these need, they say they need full sun, but they actually do good in the shade. Um, and so if, if it starts to lose some of its color over time, I might move it to the edge of a shade line where just this plant is in the sun and the rest of the container is in the shade. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, especially these red varieties are a little more tolerant of the shade than maybe some of the others also. They are. And I like, I don't, I'm not very gentle with the root balls. As long as the roots stay intact, the shape of the soil doesn't really matter. So you can squeeze this, make it into an oil shape. If you lose some of the soil, not a big deal. Uh, as long as the end volume and the crown of each plant are all at the same level, you're just fine. So you can be a, a little bit manipulative with those root balls oh, I love how to get this everything is coming to fit. Together. So pretty. And Good what color. I actually wanted, I kind of messed up. I wanted that, that chartreuse green against this red foliage. So I'm going to just take and spin this a little bit. I actually wanted it like that because I also want the chartreuse green of the Lismachia playing off this coleus color right here. So now I've got my thriller on the edge, my uh, filler, my mounting plant, coleus in the middle. And then I'm gonna fill in the edge with Lismachia. Thank you. And I actually want, this Lismachia grows quickly and it roots all over the place. If you can see that, there's roots coming out all over the stem. And so what I like to do is actually direct some of those stem inward towards the center of the plant and then they'll root onto other soil and maybe grow out other parts of the plant over time. But I'm still gonna fill a lot of Lismaki in. So I've got three here just to give us that whole kind of spilling look out the front. 
And then I have Tratoscantia. This is an awesome foliage plant as well. Um, it's been around forever. It's very aggressive and vigorous growing. So I'm only gonna put one in because it'll grow at twice or three times the rate of all these other plants. But I, I like it because it's got that burgundy color that's kind of playing off the reds and other colors that we have in the planter. I'm actually gonna put that one in the back. And I'm also going to uh, have it trail out the back. But then as these different stems grow over time, I can redirect them and put them in different pots. Oh. pots Because the, the plant's still growing from the root ball right in here, but I can redirect and put the foliage wherever I want it to look best. Now I still have one hole back here. I'm not too worried about it, because like I said, this is the back of the container, so it's okay to have some spots that are open, but I do want to fill them with soil. I don't want any of those roots exposed to the air. And so Ton's adding some soil in here, so we get enough volume just to have the whole soil, volume, uh, soil level at the same right. height. Right, so you make sure you have enough soil around each of them, right? And that's the other thing, whenever you put round pots together, you always end up with some holes. And so I like to put the soil in, mound it up like Ton just did, and then I'll work it into those holes with my fingers. And then I'll just feel around and make sure there's no other holes. I'll grab some soil, sometimes just into my hand, palm, or fingertips. Just to give it the best chance of surviving and yeah, and then and I'll really dig down. Thriving. I, you just want to make sure the root balls are not exposed to air because that air will get down and dry them out more quickly, and make it a little bit more a challenge to keep that particular plant watered and wet. And that's it. Now I can wash off the edges of the container, but this is ready to go, and it's ready to enjoy right away. And this will literally, this planter right here, will last all the way until the frost we get in November. So we're, we're here early April right now. This thing will give us six months of enjoyment pretty easily. Um, and as that coleus gets big, it's a really easy one since it doesn't bloom. It's a really one, easy one to prune and cut back and it will keep branching out the sides. So if it were to get too tall for the, for the container and kind of look funky, you can trim it back and cut it back. So this is a great, easy shade foliage container. And if you wanted a little it's bit of beautiful. color, you can always add an impatient some sort of impatient over in here in one of the spots, yeah. Just make or sure if, you fill in all the soil. Yeah, and if one of the plants die in a, in a few weeks for some reason, or doesn't look as great, you can simply pull it out, rip some of the roots out from that plant, make a little hole, and put another plant to fill in that spot. All right, now this is our shade lover. So what are you gonna think about when you're putting together our sun lover? So in the sun, um, we really, the, this is where 90% of the plants are made for, blooming plants especially. Most varieties want full sun, so they need six hours or more of sunlight. But because of that, Ton, like you were saying, they need more water as well. And so I like to have bigger soil volumes here. That plant was, or that container was half as tall as this one. The more soil, the better, the more leniency you get if you happen to miss a watering. So that's the first thing to, con to think about is soil, or soil volume and how much water that potting mix is going to hold. And then I just pick out what colors. We're still going to go with Thriller, Filler, and Spiller. Okay, so what's our Thriller? Uh, Ton, what do you think? We just used the red Dracaena. Maybe a green spice? Yeah, sounds good. You know what, I'm going to add two Thrillers into this one. And there's nothing wrong with that. So let's use this Salvia. I love this uh, Salvia. It's an annual variety of Salvia. These come in annuals and perennials. This one's actually uh, called a natural feeder, nature, nature's nutrients. We sell these into Home Depot because they attract pollinators. And so salvia attracts uh, all sorts of pollinators. It's a great one for that, especially ones with uh, beaks or snouts like uh, hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. They love to stick those snouts down these long, deep flower petals. And so we'll use that as a blue thriller and we'll have the spike as well. I'm gonna actually put the thrillers on two different sides of this container. And this'll, this'll be a way to have it against maybe a corner, into a corner. So oh, it's actually right. against two different walls. Thank Again, you. it's important to decide where you're going okay, to put a the more. planter. So maybe the salvia, maybe one wall is here against the salvia and another wall is here against the Dracaena green spike. Okay, as long as I don't mess with the foliage and I'm just manipulating the root ball, this plant's gonna stay healthy and intact and, and be just fine. Sometimes people are a little shocked at what you do to get these done because they think these plants are really delicate. And a lot of times if they're rooted out well, you can kind of not, you don't want to smash them to death, but 
you can manipulate those roots and squish them a little bit and they'll be just fine. Yep. I also want this to be Dracaena spikes. I want them to be growing straight up because once they start growing in a direction, they don't like to be moved from that direction. So I'll manipulate the whole root ball, make sure it's going straight up. If it's at an angle and I try and move it later, it'll break. So I want to get it straight right now. All right, so now what are so, you thinking when you're thinking of a filler? What kind of colors are you thinking for a filler? For so I always think color first. Um, texture more for the, the, the thrillers, but fillers, I'm thinking all about color. I want a lot of color, and I want a plant that will mound and fill out a lot of space. And I want a color that's gonna play well with this natural blue. I love that color of blue, but now I want something, since blue is a primary color, I'm gonna be looking immediately for reds or yellows. Um, and here's one. This is a great yellow. It's a smaller plant. It doesn't mount as much and this one will actually trail and fill. But this is Biden's and there are a lot of varieties of Biden's. Uh, some trail more than others. This is more of an up, upright version of it and I can see it's already growing upright. So I'm going to want that, again, primary colors to splash off of that. And then Ton has red petunias. So I'm actually going to put this towards the front since it's a little bit smaller grower. And then I'm gonna save a space. There's two ways to do this when you're using two or three pots of a color. So right here, I've got two pots of petunias. You can either space them throughout and have them kind of grow and intermingle between, weave their way between all the other plants. This one doesn't work. Here, I'm gonna, I wanna show that, I wanna talk about it. So he's, these are still young, but they're, and so he's saying it's not rooted out, but I think it's still probably okay. It didn't want to come out because I think it is well rooted. If it is, so if it's not coming out, you can squeeze these pots more and more and get them to fall out. So I, I still got a good container there and I wanna make sure the root didn't break off. So it's a little bit loose, but the stem is still connected to all those roots. It's just not connected to the soil very much. So this one's still healthy actually. So I wanted to, point that out that just because the roots break a little bit doesn't mean the plant is dead okay so I'm gonna put that one so the other way to do this is when you're putting two or three container or pots of a different of the same color together is to group them really close to each other and that's what I'm gonna do here I'm actually can you give me one more of those red ones so now we're, we're talking primary colors again, really basic. We learned this in elementary school, mm -hmm. right? So they always work together, red, yellow, and blue. And I like the way they all pop together they and really beautiful. make a beautiful container. This is turning out great. So these are both mounting plants. Now, to follow our formula, we kind of need a spiller, right? So mm -hmm. what? Here's, here's like the ultimate, most popular spiller there is, potato vine, so Ipomia. Now, the one thing about Ipomia, they're very sensitive to cold. So we might start bringing them into garden centers here at the end of April, but we still will get below 37 degrees and that's where these die really quickly, as at 37 degrees. So if you're planting that now, you wanna protect it if it gets down to that temperature. Yeah, and that's the, why they're great for containers, especially this time of year. They work great, great in flower beds, but I wouldn't plant them until Memorial Day in my flower beds. Now these petunias are gonna trail a bit too. They will, yeah, they're mounding and spreading. So they'll trail over the edge and they're already starting to trail a little bit. I'm gonna, because potato vine is very aggressive, I'm gonna kind of put this back in its own little space back here at the back of the container. And it'll actually grow out through the petunias. I can, again, I can direct these stems over time to go in different directions that I want, but it'll also fill up the back end and kind of be like a focal point as well of this container. So I've got that there. I still want one more spiller that's a little bit more tame. And so what I'm going to do is let me bring a little white in. So we've got primary colors. I love white, especially smaller bloomed whites, because it's a contrasting color. And it can make the other colors more intense when you have either pastels, but especially white. Uh, as long as you use it sparingly, you can really make the other colors pop. So I'm going to start with one of these. Um, this is, I don't have a plant tag in here. This is, uh, uh, it's a petunia still, even though it's a smaller bloom petunia. And proven winners call these mini petunias. They're not calibrachoas. They're not all the way down to the calibrachoa size. They're still in the petunia family, but they're a smaller bloomed variety. So I'm gonna put one of those here in the middle.
And then these euphorbia, this is actually in the poinsettia family. Did you know that? That's beautiful. Uh, euphorbia is a plant that has these little dainty white blooms. These will kind of grow throughout all the other plants. So I want to start with them in the middle and they will spill over the edge, but that's kind of weird that I'm starting with them in the middle. It's just the wet, the habit that they have. So I'm actually going to move some of these petunias out of the way and squeeze these in. Oh, and they'll go through all the I over love how time. that made those other colors pop though. Yeah. It, it makes it more intense. It really does. It's, so I always look for contrasting colors in all of my containers and my beds too. You just want to use them sparingly when you do that. So there we have it. There's still a little bit of soil volume showing, but that'll fill in probably in the next two to three weeks. So this is a great container that will also last all summer long as well, as long as it's regularly watered. And I guess that's the last thing we should probably talk about is yeah, how Tom, do you irrigate? Tell us how we're going to keep these alive, because I hear that from people all the time. Oh, I plant these beautiful containers, but then they start to fade out by the end well, of summer. Well, they start to fade out for a few reasons. One of them is lack of fertilizer. There's a lot of roots using nutrients. And so oftentimes the soil is pre-charged with fertilizer, but it only lasts for about a month. And so you need to fertilize these, and you can use Osmocote or a miracle Grow type, follow the instructions on them. And then it's when you water, what you're going to need to do is wet the entire profile and make sure that your pot has drainage holes on the bottom, because another mistake is if the pot doesn't have any holes, you'll drown your plants to death. But with those drainage holes, when it's in the 90s, this is going to be, need to be watered at least daily, and maybe twice daily if it's really hot. But these containers, you need to keep up on them because once you get behind, it becomes quite difficult to resurrect them and make them look good again. And you may end up going to the garden center and picking up more of the plants to plug in there because you can't revive those that were already there. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, can I just put some soil capturing um, particles in there? Or not soil, but water capturing particles and things like that you're still going to need to water them daily at least and probably more often. All right, so maybe a drip system is a better way to go if you can if on some of these pots. If you pay attention, yes, because the drip system may only water half the pot. And so you need to make sure that your drippers in there are completely watering. And again, we talked a little about this earlier. For full sun areas, these larger containers are critical because they hold more water. They have more root space so that those roots can reach down and they're because of that extra soil they're more resistant to blowing over in the wind all right and all of these plants are readily ava available at home depot and walmart mm -hmm. from olson's nursery yep. olson's greenhouse we sell proven winners as well as a ton of other varieties of basket builder type plants that we call them as well as any bedding plants that you can utilize in containers or in your beds okay any other tips that we need to know to make sure that these are healthy all summer no the last thing is i i love to put mine on drip irrigation so like ton said make sure you've got enough emitters that the water spreads everywhere but use it on a timer uh, once you get your drip irrigation system installed make sure it's on a timer otherwise you'll forget to turn it on just like you might forget to water and that's what the that's what's worse for these plant planters is if you miss a watering especially in the summertime. Make sure your timer has a battery backup because if you lose power and it's plugged in, it may reset that timer. And, right. and so you always want a timer with battery backup. Okay, so really a lot of us aren't as artistic as you, Brian. <laughs> Can we go wrong just putting what we want in there? You can't, I always say that it's hard to find flowers that clash with each other. So you can't go wrong, but, and you don't even need to follow the thriller spiller filler method either. Um, anytime you put plants together, even if you just put one species, one variety of plants in a container, it's a great experience and it gives you that uh, chance to get your fingers dirty and enjoy the fruits of your labors as well. Right, so the biggest thing is put together something fun for you, have fun doing it, and really just create something beautiful for your home.